In this lecture, we are continuing with looking at the properties of Laplace transforms. Now, in this case, we'll prove that the Laplace transform of integral f of t dt is f of s by s, where capital F of s is a Laplace transform of f of t. And the way we prove that is again by starting with the fundamental definition of Laplace transforms. Laplace transform of integral of f of t dt is integral 0 to infinity e to the power of minus st of integral f of t dt dt. This is the first integral, the inner integral, that's a function of t and that's the integral for the Laplace transform. Now let's see, if we integrate by parts, having this as u dash and this is v, so in integration by parts, you'll notice you have the first term here. You have to evaluate this integral from 0 to infinity. And then whatever is left, which is 1 by s times integral 0 to infinity, e to the power of minus st f of t dt. So this is uv evaluated between 0 and infinity. This is integral uv dash. So v is integral f of t dt, v dash is f of t. So if you do this integral here at s t equal to infinity, this term drops out to 0. At t equal to 0, this term drops out to 0. So the whole thing goes vanishes. Oh. Then we look at this right here. That looks like Laplace of f of t by definition. So we can write Laplace of integral f of t dt is 1 divided by s times f of s. In general, if you integrate a function f of t n times, then a Laplace transform of that integrated function is 1 divided by s to the power of n f of s. Now we look at the time scaling property of Laplace transform. What do you mean by time scaling? We are looking at the Laplace transform of a function f uh, of a t, a is a scalar, so it scales to time. Now that's equal to 1 divided by a times capital F s divided by a, where capital F of s is Laplace of f of t. So essentially we are taking this f of s, replacing the s by s divided by a, and then multiplying by 1 by a, and that should give you a Laplace transform of f of a t. How do you prove that? Start from the basic definition of Laplace transform and then what you do is do a variable transform. So we'll, we'll somehow get rid of this one. We're using variable transform. So I'll write a t is beta equal to beta. So if you differentiate it, a d t gives you d beta. So a is a constant. Remember, a is a scalar. So you replace a t with beta. Uh, therefore, t is beta by a, and d t is d beta by a. If I do that, so d t is d beta by a, a t is beta. And here, this one is t is beta by a. Now this looks like a Laplace transform. So let's call s by a as s hat and we'll bring the a outside. The limits of integration are the same. Now this looks like f of s hat or capital F of s hat. It's again Laplace transform. That's what it is. Let me write that. It's a capital F of s hat and replace s hat by uh, our original function here, s divided by a. That should give you 1 divided by a f of s divided by a. And that's the proof. Here we are looking at the integral of the Laplace transform, this property. Here it says that if you have the Laplace transform of f of t as capital F of s, and if you integrate it with respect to s, then that is essentially the whole thing here is a function of s. 
is the Laplace transform of f of t divided by t. Again, start with the definition of Laplace transform. Laplace transform f of t is integral 0 to infinity to the power of minus st f of t dt. This is equal to f of s. Let's integrate this, the whole thing, with both the left hand side and left right hand side with respect to s. So, let us make so. Uh, we can, the, it's, uh, the inner integral is with respect to t and the outer integral is with respect to s. We can bring the inner integral outside, so bring it outside without any problems. And now we integrate with respect to s. Okay, so. so we integrate e to the power of minus st with respect to s. You get e to the power of minus st divided by s divided by t with the negative sign. We bring the negative sign all the way out. Now if you look at this thing here, this looks like the Laplace transform of f of t divided by t. Right? That's what we did. And we have proved here. We just move this negative sign here to get this. In general, if you integrate the Laplace transform n times, then that's equal to minus 1 to the power of n Laplace transform of f of t divided by t to the power of n. Here I'm looking at two more properties without proof. The first is uh, the Laplace transform of a convolution of two functions. Now convolution is essentially illustrated in this animated figure. This is your f of tau and this is g of tau. The convolution is essentially you place g at some t and then you integrate the common area. Notice that this is going to be a function of t. So basically the convolution theorem for the plus transforms is convolution in the time domain is the product of the Laplace transforms in the frequency domain or the Laplace domain. And then we have uh, the plus transform of functions that are time delayed. What do you mean by time delayed? You have this function f of t. Notice that I've truncated it. So in the plus domain, we are only interested in functions for positive value of time. So that's why I use this step function. You need step function to truncate f of t. Now if you do a time shift of tau, like so, essentially move this function forward in time. So that's this. The Laplace transform with that time delayed function is e to the power of minus tau s times capital F of s. So capital F of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. Now it might be worthwhile to remember some Laplace transforms. Uh, the Laplace transform of uh, impulse function is 1, or unit step function is 1 divided by s t times unit step is 1 divided by s squared. The plus of e to the power of minus 80 is 1 divided by s plus a and e to the power of a plus 80 is 1 divided by s minus a. The plus of sine omega t is omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. The plus of cos omega t is s divided by s squared plus omega squared. And the plus of e to the power of minus a t times sine omega t is omega divided by s plus a the whole square plus omega squared and the plus of e to the power of minus a t cos omega t is s plus a divided by s plus a is the whole square plus omega square. This summary you should definitely remember the definition of Laplace transform it can be used in all sorts of ways uh, for defining various Laplace transforms doing various theorems you should definitely remember the rules of Laplace transform will be used extensively in solving differential equations in particular the derivative rule and finally you need to remember some common Laplace transforms